I've been sitting here. I was like, just just say who made the movie, Chris. Just you know, but I I just <laughs> still processing. It took me thirty five minutes to drive home from the theater that was showing this. I'm sitting here, and I'm still like, what? <laughs> Bo is Afraid is written and directed by Ari Aster. This is his third film, and it stars Joaquin Phoenix as Bo. And it's three hours long, and A24 gave him like $35 million to make it, and it's crazy. Just on that alone, you should go see it. There are a lot of things that can be said about this movie that can be taken a million different ways. I think just about anybody who sees the movie might leave with their very own interpretation, but there is one thing I can tell you that is absolutely certain you will never see a film like this ever again. So go see it in a theater. Uh, there's not going to be another movie like Bo is Afraid. It's impossible. There will only ever be one of these. <laughs> the IMDb synopsis says, Following the sudden death of his mother, a mild-mannered but anxiety-ridden man confronts his darkest fears as he embarks on an epic Kafka-esque odyssey back home. The fact that the actual synopsis, like the official one, says Kafka-esque Everything about this movie is crazy. On the drive to this movie, I said to myself, look, it's probably not going to make 100% sense. It's more than likely going to be very off-putting and a little unsettling, and it might annoy you. And it's probably going to be very self-indulgent. At three hours, being a comedy, drama, horror released by A24, those seem like fair predictions. So I didn't engage with this movie like I do other movies. I went in very much so confident in all of those predictions. And I was right. But still, the movie shocked me with how insane it really is. Honestly, I struggle to explain the film and I don't really want to because I think at the end of the day, the one thing that I can really grasp from it is that Ari Aster is showing us what it's like to have extreme anxiety, what it does to you and what it does to the people around you. And showing us that through a very fantastical lens that is not part of this reality, I don't think. If you watch this movie expecting to see characters that exist in our world where things happen, you're not going to get that. This is a very heightened version of reality. It's almost like everything that Bo is very afraid of happening constantly in his mind is shown at 110%, 11 out of 10, the dial turned up to max all the time. Now in other movies that are a little more audience friendly, a little more four quadrant, shall we say, you might get a cutaway to how a normal person on the outside is perceiving what our protagonist sees and we are informed, okay, so that's not really happening. The protagonist is imagining that because that's just crazy. And this guy on the outside just let me know that because I went into his POV for a second. This movie doesn't give us that. You are firmly in Bo's POV. And so when he hears that there might be a knife wielding maniac, we see this guy and he's butt ass naked and the news is, is talking about him and how he's butt ass naked <laughs> and he's running around with a knife and nobody's doing anything about it. When he confronts a cop about this butt ass naked guy with a knife, the cop is like, oh my God, don't make me do it and draws his gun and starts freaking out even though Bo's not moving because Bo's terrified of getting shot by this cop all of a sudden. More than likely, if we were looking at this scene from the lens of reality, this cop might be holding his gun and being like, sir, step away. But we're looking at it from Bo's perspective and the cop has his gun out and he's shaking like he's about to kill him. Now, I, of course, could be completely wrong. That might not be what Ari Aster is trying to say, but it's what I felt while watching it, which I think is valid because that's all anybody who watches this movie can really take away is what did you feel while watching it? Because the movie in every way doesn't really activate our brain to the point where we start to think about the series of events occurring logically or, or even chronologically, we are looking at this movie from the sense of how does it make us feel in the moment? What do these series of images and conversations make us feel about how Bo is perceiving the world? Because there's a sequence in an attic near the end of the movie that has no logical explanation. <laughs> In reality, it just doesn't. And you just have to accept it. And it's really funny, I have to say. I laughed a lot. And I wasn't laughing at it. I think I was laughing in all the right spots that Ari Aster wanted me to. And it also has a very few scary parts. There are some excellent 
prosthetics and props in this movie. If I was an actor in the film, there is a thing built that I would want to take home. <laughs> If I was that actor, I could very well see many people not liking this film. I could see it getting your one out of tens worst movie I've ever seen IMDb reviews and really cringeworthy, embarrassing Amazon reviews and all kinds of things. But I really like this movie. In fact, I might have loved it. And I, I must stress that I did not engage with this movie like I do most and let Ari Aster take me on a weird metaphorical existential journey into anxiety and terror. And I also think that I'm looking at this from a very specific lens that most audience members may not. And that is that as a filmmaker, I really appreciate the fact that this movie even got made and exists. Yes, he had to have a very successful and <laughs> in retrospect, simple movie like Hereditary. His last two movies had to happen for this movie to happen, for somebody to give him this level of trust. It remains to be seen whether or not this will happen again for him or if it will be a warning sign to other filmmakers who come to studios saying I have this crazy idea because I'm, I don't know, I'm just not seeing the movie making its budget back in theaters, 35 million. I think that it could potentially through DVD, Blu-ray and rentals through VOD. And I also think that it will 100% garner a massive following similar to something like The Empty Man. But it will be viewed as a very self-indulgent film by many people and that's fine. And there's going to be tons of people who turn it off 20 minutes in, and that's fine. But if you are the type of person that appreciates very strange and unique movies that could only be made by one person, then you should see this one. And Joaquin Phoenix is excellent in it. He does everything. Physical work, stunts, crazed emotions, highs, lows, fun, horror, panic, confusion, everything. He really is the full package here, and uh, he's wonderful in the movie. You should see it. Uh, but don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> it's really weird. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.